who or what are you a servant of? Mm -hmm. Now here again in our key verse for today's message, we will see Paul ask a very important question to the Roman believers here. Paul, he again, he asked, do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey. In other words, mm -hmm. whom you obey has rule over you. Yeah. They are your master. All right. Now, nobody likes to hear that something or someone is their master. <laughs> Slavery, that is a very sore subject, isn't it? It is a sore subject that most folks tend to not like to discuss. Mm -hmm. The reason we don't like to talk about slavery is because it brings up a rather harsh history for us. Mm -hmm. uh, for some folks in this country, they don't like to recall the history of slavery because it shines such a bad light on people that they may be connected to. Mm -hmm. And because of that light, they may feel great shame. They may feel great embarrassment about that history. Yeah, yeah. Now, the same thing held true during the days of Paul. You see, mm -hmm. slavery was such a big thing for the Romans. Mm -hmm. The subject of slavery or being a bun servant in his letter to the Romans, mm -hmm. it may have caused some to have some thoughts, some feelings about slavery mm -hmm. because of how significant it was in the Roman society. Mm -hmm. Now, in the Roman society, it was not necessarily based off of race like how it was here in our society. But in Roman society, I want you to understand that it was also very abusive and it was also very degrading as well. Mm -hmm. And so some of us, we with that thought in mind, we look back on the slavery that happened in our country and we look on it as being very degrading and being very abusive to people who look like we do. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul, he explains his reasoning as to why he chose to speak of slavery in his letter to the Romans here in the sixth chapter here. We'll see here in the 19th verse, if you're still looking at it there, mm -hmm. you see that Paul says, I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. Mm -hmm. So he spoke on this subject so that we can clearly understand uh, the slavery that was present then and the slavery that I tell you today that is still present in our world. All right. now, yeah. Nobody wants to hear that slavery is still present in our world. All right. And we may be thinking of that when I say that we may be thinking of that one way. But I want you to understand here today that I'm talking about slavery spiritually here. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be a slave. Every man, woman, boy and girl would rather live freely. Mm -hmm. Yet, whether you believe it or not, every person in this world is a servant to something or to someone. And at the same time, every person in our world today is free. Mm -hmm. We are free to something or we are free of someone. All right. Come on. Again, I want you to understand here that I'm speaking of this subject spiritually. Mm -hmm. So the question that we must answer today is who do you serve? Yeah. Yeah. Who are you free from? Now, this can be kind of confusing. Mm -hmm. This question is, it can be quite confusing at first glance, but I promise you that by the end of this message, those questions won't be so confusing. All right. The first thing that I want to look at here today is the history of our soul. I want to show you something here mm -hmm. about our soul so that we can have a better understanding about the statement that I've made here today about everyone in the world being a servant to something or to someone. Right. Yeah. Now, when we look at the history of our soul, we will first call to remembrance that our soul came from God. Yes, sir. 
Scripture it plainly tells us in the second chapter of Genesis and the seventh verse mm -hmm. that the Lord breathed into mankind's nostrils the breath of life. Yeah, yeah. And I want you to understand that God's breath, that breath of life that he breathed into mankind's nostrils is that soul that is within this shell that is our body today. Along the timeline of the history of our soul, after man, or after God breathed into mankind's nostrils the breath of life, yeah. we could say that there was a glow to our soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we had glory there in the garden. Yeah. However, that glow was short-lived. It was short lived as mankind would fall in the garden to sin. All right. So when you and I were born into this world, mm -hmm. we were born into a world that was polluted. Mm -hmm. We was born into a world that was covered in sin. All right. All right. And we know again that sin is anything that stands in opposition against the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so by us being born into a world that is polluted and covered in sin, mm -hmm. we grew up learning the sin. Uh. I don't know if you hear me here today. I don't know if all of you will agree with me on that. In other words, what I want you to understand is that we grew up learning the way of the world. We were all taught what is right and what is wrong, mm -hmm. but that right and wrong that we was taught was a doctrine that was of the world. Mm -hmm. So we learned how to lie about things. All right. yeah. We knew what was right, but we also knew what was wrong. And so when we did wrong, we did not want anybody to know of our wrong. So we tried to hide our wrong. Yeah, yeah. We tried to cover up our wrong. We tried to bury our wrong. We, again, we lied about our wrongs. Barking, barking. We learned how to live by our lust. All right. We learned how to live by our passions. Mm -hmm. And in doing this, whether we realized it or not, we became obedient to our lust, we became obedient to our passions. Right. So when our lust and when our passions told us to move one way, mm -hmm. guess what we did? Mm -hmm. We got up and we moved the way that it told us to move. And we did it without doubt. We did it without hesitating. All right. When our lust and our passions told us to move another way, mm -hmm. Guess what we did? We moved the other way. We did exactly what our lust and what our passions commanded us to do. Right. Do you see what I'm saying yeah. there? Yeah. Come on. So I say all of this to say that our lust and our passions, they had or they still have rule over us today. This is to say that anybody who is obedient to their own lust and their passions, they are a servant mm -hmm. to their lust okay. and to their passions. I don't know if you hear me here today. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let us remember this about uh, lust and passion, if you will. Mm -hmm. Let us remember that our lust and our passions, our selfish ambitions, mm -hmm. let us remember that these are works of the flesh. Therefore, these are works of sin. Mm -hmm. So I say all of this to say that if we are being obedient to our selfish ambitions, mm -hmm. if we are being obedient to our lust, if we are being obedient to our passions, we are being a servant to sin. I don't know if you hear me there. Now, along this timeline of our soul, when our soul was lost in the bondage of sin, mm -hmm. the Lord did not desire for the soul to dwell in sin, mm -hmm. 
God did not desire for the soul to be completely lost to sin. Mm -hmm. And we have seen in scripture how the Lord has dealt with bondage before in the past. All right. All right. When the children of Israel were in the bondage of the Egyptians, mm -hmm. God did not leave them there. All right. The Lord, he heard their cries and he sent Moses to Pharaoh to tell Pharaoh that God said to let his people go. Mm -hmm. Now, as God had sent Moses into Egypt to free the children of Israel from their bondage, mm -hmm. I tell you that God sent someone to the world mm -hmm. to free them, to free us from our bondage to sin. Mm -hmm. God gave to the world his only begotten son to free us from the bondage of sin. In other words, to free us from our servitude of sin. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he came and he said to all those souls that was trapped in the bondage of sin that, that they or we could be free from the bondage of sin if we choose to follow his lead. If we choose to follow after him, mm -hmm. did you follow Christ today? As Paul stated, Christ having been raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him, over Christ. For the death that Christ died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. We see Paul say there in the ninth and the 10th right. verse there. All right. mm -hmm. So I quote that scripture there mm -hmm. to say that not only did Jesus preach freedom, but he also gave his life for freedom. Yeah. Yeah. He gave his life so that we could be free from the bondage of sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at this point in the soul's timeline, and I want you to understand that I'm talking about all of our souls here today. History meets the present. You see, every soul has been given a choice. All right. That choice is this, mm -hmm. freedom or bondage. All right. Come on. Freedom or bondage. Yeah. Will you follow Jesus to freedom mm -hmm. or will you choose to stay a slave to sin? Mm -hmm. The yeah. choice is yours. Mm -hmm. Joshua, he discussed this very same thought to the children of Israel near the end of his life. Mm -hmm. Joshua, he gathered the children of Israel together and he spoke to them about how their forefathers had served idols. Yeah, yeah. And he asked them, who would they serve? Mm -hmm. Would they serve the Lord or would they serve idols as their forefathers did? Joshua, he very plainly said to them that he and his house will be a servant of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Will you be a servant of the Lord today or will you choose to continue to be a servant of sin today? Mm -hmm. The choice has been given to all of us. And there are many people living in this world. They live blissfully, mm -hmm. not realizing that they are indeed a servant to something or to someone. But I want you to understand today that Everybody is a servant to something or to someone. Some will say that they have liberty, that they have freedom, and that they are living freely to do whatever it is that they desire to do. But I have some news for them today, and the news is this. Freedom comes with having the ability to choose to abide by someone's rules. That is the truth of the matter. Some may not like it, but again, the truth of the matter is that freedom comes with having to abide by someone's law. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are free in this country. Mm -hmm. We are free to abide by the law of the United States of America. Guess what happens when you go against the law of the United States of America? Guess what happens when you break the law? Mm -hmm. You put in jail. Not so free anymore. Mm 
That's just the truth of the matter. When we break those laws, punishment comes. Now here in the sixth chapter of Romans, we see Paul makes the case here for why we should rather live by the rule of grace rather than by the rule of sin. You see, sin has its own law that the sinners must abide by. Where some will choose to live with sin as their master, we are encouraged to live with Christ being our master. The one that desires for Christ to be their master, I tell you today that they or we, we cannot also be a servant of sin. As Jesus stated, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. Jesus then said, you cannot serve God and mammon. And you've heard me say that before. But what I want to do here today is I want to I want to take a look here at the rule of sin as our master. I, I got to show the world something here today. All right. So I, I want to take a look here at the rule of, uh, of sin as our master so that we can understand why it is better for us to not be in the bondage of sin with sin being our master, with sin having dominion over us. Now, as a servant of sin, Paul stated that one would be free from righteousness. Now, listen to that. Being free from righteousness, having freedom from righteousness. Now, again, because slavery was so significant in Paul's day, we should understand that the mere idea of freedom was seen as a great prize just as it was seen as a great prize during the days of slavery here in our country, just as freedom is seen as a great prize uh, in our world today. However, I must ask what kind of prize could come from one choosing to be free from righteousness? What kind of prize could come from one choosing to be free, in other words, from God? What kind of reward is there in being free from the Lord? Now, there are many people who have a grand desire to be free from God. They crave to be free from God. The reason behind this desire is because they view being a believer or being a servant of God, they view it as religion and they want nothing to do with religion. In their eyes, in their mind, religion is evil and anything tied with religion, they want to stay away from. However, just as Paul said, and as you have heard me say before, Mm -hmm. genuinely believing in the Lord is not a walk of religion. It is a walk of faith. There's a difference between religion and faith. So here again, Paul was speaking directly to the believers who were in Rome and we'll see him speaking to them of their past. When we see him state there in the 20th verse, he says, when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. Again, bringing up being free in regard to righteousness bringing up again, being free to the Lord. However, I want you to look at this question here that Paul asked there in the 21st verse. He has a question there. He says there in that 21st verse, what fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? In other words, he's asking here a very interesting question that must be asked of those who are a servant of sin to those who are sinners today. And that question again is, what fruit are you bearing from living as a servant of sin? What is your fruit? What fruit do you bear? What fruit do you put forth? What fruit do you bring forth in our world? Now these believers, they considered Paul's question 
And they look back on their past to consider the fruit that they had bore. And we'll see that as they give it consideration, Paul, he insinuates in that very same verse that these believers were left with great shame and embarrassment. Mm -hmm. Now, how can Paul insinuate that? Well, Paul was a sinner as well, just as we are sinners. Mm -hmm. And guess what happens when we look back on our life when we were a sinner? We look back on the things that we did when we were a servant of sin with great shame. We are embarrassed of the things that we did when we were a sinner. Mm -hmm. You see, I believe that all of us as genuine believers, we have this same shame and embarrassment when we think back on our days as a sinner. And even today, when we do something that we know to be a sin, we know it to be something that is against the Lord. We are ashamed. We are so ashamed that we don't even want to go before the Lord because we are filled with so in so much embarrassment for what we have done. The reason why this is, is the case is because we know that there is no good fruit that can come from our sins. We know that in the days when we were a servant of sin, we know now that we did not bear any good fruit. We did not bring forth any good fruit in the world. We look back on that time and we see that we did nothing but wickedness and we are filled with great shame and great embarrassment of that wickedness. All right. All right. We brought forth wicked fruit. Now, many servants of, of sin, they don't feel this same type of shame while they are living in sin. All right. now, the reason why I believe this to be the case is because the sinner's eyes are blinded to their sin. Mm -hmm. They don't see their sin. This was true in the days of the children of Israel when they were given the law by Moses. All right. Of those that lived during those days, Paul wrote that their minds were blinded. In other words, their eyes were blinded to their sins. Their eyes were blinded, in other words, to what we was talking about in our Sunday school lesson today. Their eyes were blinded to the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll see here that Paul wrote of those that lived during those days there to the Corinthians in the third chapter of second Corinthians. If you want to turn there, the 14th and the 15th verse. He said, for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted. He was talking about a veil being over their eyes, right. blinding them to the truth. Yeah, yeah. He said that that veil remained unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament mm -hmm. because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses, that is the law, yeah. is read, Paul says, a veil lies on their hearts. Mm -hmm. The reason why that veil was over their hearts or over their eyes is because that veil had not been taken away. Mm -hmm. They had not heard or accepted, as we've been talking about in our Sunday school lessons, mm -hmm. the truth. Mm -hmm. Because they had not received the truth, they were blinded to the truth. They were blinded to knowing that they were a sinner that was in need of being saved from their bondage of sin. In order to have this veil lifted, one must turn to Christ. And when one turns to Christ, Christ will take away that veil from their heart or from their eyes. And then they will be able to see the truth. They will be able to know the truth. They will be able to know that they are a sinner. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. yes, sir. When this veil is lifted from our eyes, we are no longer blind mm -hmm. to the truth. We are no longer blind to our sins. Mm -hmm. The sinner believes that they have profited from their sin because they are blind to their sin. They believe that they have gathered up for themselves gold. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas the truth of the matter is that they have only gathered up what will one day rust, what will one day tarnish. Yeah. It's not gold mm -hmm. at all. Jeremiah, he likened a servant of sin to one who has sown wheat, but reaped thorns. To the servant of sin, Paul wrote, for when we were in the flesh, when we were a servant of sin, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit. But Paul said there in the seventh chapter of Romans and the fifth verse, that the fruit that was born was fruit to death. Right. It was fruit of wickedness. Mm -hmm. It was not good fruit. So again, I must ask the question here today, what kind of reward is there in being a servant of sin? What kind of prize is there in being a slave to sin? What kind of reward is there in being free from God and obeying the law, the commands of your lust, your passions, mm -hmm. your selfish ambitions, sin? Mm -hmm. As Paul said to the Romans, the servant of sin is a servant to uncleanness and lawlessness, which leads to more lawlessness. So in other words, there is no reward. There is nothing but lawlessness. There is no reward spiritually to living in the bondage of sin. Personally, I tell you today, I don't believe there to be any reward in the world when you choose to live in the bondage of sin. I believe that all you're left with when you live in the bondage of sin is heartache pain, stress, yeah. worry, mm -hmm. without anyone to be able to lift up that heartache, that pain, that stress, those worries, and all of those burdens. This, I tell you today, is a very sad and tragic reality that many, unfortunately, go without realizing. Right. They don't recognize what is causing all their hurt. Mm -hmm their pain, their stress, their burdens, and why they are unable to get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately for all of us, God desired to make it possible for mankind to live in freedom from sin. All right. He desired it so that we are not living a pointless and unfruitful life, being a servant of sin. Mm -hmm. This is why the Lord gave to the world his only begotten son, so that we can be fruitful in the world, so that we could be profitable in this world, so that we can gain, so that we can reap a good reward of his heavenly kingdom. Jesus, he once stated to those who were servants of sin and to those who desire to be free from sin, Jesus stated, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. But listen to this. And a slave does not abide in the house forever. But Jesus said, a son, a son abides forever. Mm -hmm. Those who choose to leave the bondage of sin and follow Christ, we become a son of God. We become children of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And again, Jesus there again, I want to repeat to you here today. Jesus said, a son abides forever. A child of God, I want you to hear again today. Jesus said, you, a child, you will abide forever. I don't know if you know what that means today. Jesus, he went on to say, therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall, you will be free indeed. Now, someone at this point may ask, well, we'll be free to do what? <laughs> well, we'll be free to what? What kind of freedom are you talking about, preacher? <laughs> well, the one who has been set free from sin is no longer under the rule of sin. That sounds like freedom to me. Right. Not being under the dominion, 
the authority of sin, mm -hmm. where sin is commanding you to do something and you go and do it. <laughs> you see, sin is, is no longer your master. All right. yeah. I want you to understand that this person is not free to just simply live for themselves, to do whatever it is that they want to do. Mm -hmm. You see, that would simply be living in sin all over again. Again, yeah, I want to remind you here today that freedom, it comes with having to abide by someone's rule, yeah, someone's yeah. laws, someone's authority. Yeah. Well, the one that has been set free by Christ is now free to live for Christ. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me there today? Yes, the one who has been freed from the bondage of sin is now free to live for Christ. All right. The one that has been set free by Christ is now free to live under God's authority. Mm -hmm. They are free now to become servants of righteousness. Yeah. I don't know if you know what that means today. Mm -hmm. So to be clear here, the one that has been set free by Christ, we have a new master. Mm -hmm. And our master is now Christ himself. Yeah. Our master is now God. Mm -hmm. And remember what I said earlier about freedom. Mm -hmm. Freedom comes with the price of abiding by someone's rule or someone's law. So yes, you may be free from sin, but the servant of righteousness ought to be obedient to God's rule. Mm -hmm. Ought to be obedient to God's way. We ought to be obedient, in other words, to God's gospel, his doctrine. Yeah, yeah. Now, the question will be asked mm -hmm. and has already been asked and answered. Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul said there in the 15th verse, certainly not with an exclamation mark. Mm -hmm. Paul was adamant about his answer there. All right. Just because we live under God's grace, mm -hmm. under his authority, it does not give us the freedom to go about sinning. All right. No, you and I, we are to be obedient to that form of doctrine that is God's way All right. to which we were delivered. Being obedient to the Lord and his doctrine leads to one bearing much fruit. As we have seen in recent lessons and sermons, when we abide in the Lord, God provides for us so that we can bear much fruit in our world. Mm -hmm. Of this fruit, Paul said to the Romans, having become slaves of God, there in the 22nd verse, mm -hmm. he said, you have your fruit to holiness. Mm -hmm. There's a reward. There's a prize when you are a servant of God, when you are a servant of righteousness. Mm -hmm. He said, you have your fruit to holiness and the end, Paul said there, said the end, everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Everlasting life in God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. We saw Jesus say in our Sunday school lesson here today that his kingdom is not of this world. We're talking about God's heavenly kingdom. We're talking about God's world now. Mm -hmm. now. Where we may look back on our life with great shame when we were once a servant of sin, we don't look back on our life as a servant of God, Well, we don't look on our life today as a servant of God with the same embarrassment mm -hmm. or with the same shame. At least I hope you don't. I'm a child of God. I'm not embarrassed or ashamed about that. I love being a child of God. I'm very proud to be a child of God. I would tell you today that I am happy to, to be a child of God. I would tell you today that I'm happy to be free from sin. I would tell you today that I am happy to be a servant of God not only am I happy about it, I am proud. I'm a proud servant of the Lord. The one who loved me and gave me his only begotten son. 
His son who personally came to me and showed me the way to be free mm -hmm. from the harsh bondage of sin. Mm -hmm. I hope that all of you who are free from sin will feel the same exact way. Right. Yeah. You see, I tell you today that God should be your boast mm -hmm. if you have been set free by him. In the book of Jeremiah, we see that the Lord said, let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these, the Lord said, I delight. Though sinners do not realize this, living under the law of sin is harsh. It is abusive. It is degrading. Mm -hmm. Not only is it harsh, abusive, and degrading, there is no prize. There is no reward. You see, you are not necessarily free, being free from the Lord. You see, when sin is your master, mm -hmm. you do not have the love of God to always keep you lifted up when you are stressed out, mm -hmm. when you are heavenly burdened, when your heart is filled with so much hurt, when your heart is filled with so much pain, you are free from the Lord. And the Lord is not there to lift up. He's not there to mend that wounded, that broken spirit mm -hmm. when sin is your master. Mm -hmm. See, sin is a very tough master that does nothing but weigh you down with stress and burdens. Whereas God as your master is a loving master. God is a forgiving master. God is a redeeming master. I tell you today, Jesus said that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. You see, I would much rather live under a master that desires to take away my burdens rather than put on more and more burdens on my soul. You see, we must ask this question again today as to whether we would rather live free under the master and the rule of sin, or would we rather live free under the rule and the authority of God with God being our master? You see, I'd much rather be a servant of that liberty. I'd much rather be a servant with God being my master today. I'd rather have that prize at the end of my servitude to the Lord, that prize of everlasting life, that everlasting life of peace, that everlasting life of happiness, that everlasting life of joy, as opposed to the liberty that leads to my spiritual suffering and my spiritual death today. So again, I ask you today, who do you serve? My hope is that you would rather live under the law of God, that you would rather live under his grace, that you would rather live under his authority rather than live under sin's authority with no reward. Amen. Amen. Amen.